idea. She says, let's make an inverter video, right? Right, Ida, right, right. Right, Ida! Inverter video, yeah. Hey, everybody, I've been power testing these Ally Time batteries. They're pouch cells. I'm starting to like them once I figured out how they really work. And I'm gonna do a good review on these because, well, you need to know the truth. I've been running the hell out of them. That's what you'd do, right? We're gonna be doing a video about inverter choices as well as I have a viewer that wants to know what can he do to increase the voltage on one of his inverters. So um, I'd stay tuned for the whole video and be sure that if you want to support the channel, you get down there that buy me a coffee or Ko-Fi for Kira and drop something out there because I'm pretty much doing this full time now and it ain't cheap. So give me an idea of what y'all need and questions. If y'all ain't noticed, I answer most of them. So let's get on to this. I'm going to uh, show you. We're going to open these up as you've probably seen in the thumbnail and we're going to get into them. All right, so as the, uh, the title says, be sure you catch that part down there at the bottom. Everything I'm showing you here, I'll put some links to it so you guys can go verify it, see what you're looking at. One of the things here, you see those LI times? I have been abuse testing these, not because I'm a prick. I'm a prick because that's my nature. However, because if I want to tell you that's any good, man, they got to take some back and forth. And those bus bars is just half inch copper pipe, type L flat. And then some additional amperage carried through this stuff here, which I've got my buddy Robert up in Washington sent me a huge 15 pound roll of this stuff of two and five eighths copper strip. And um, it, as it says here, will handle 43, this, uh, this one foot length here, I tested it at one foot, will handle 43, uh, 47.3 amps before any temperature change resistance, resistance occurred, okay? So at 13.69 volts. Now, looks thin, but if you do like I did, fold it up into multiples, added on there so I've got a uh, 240 amp capability here and then I just jacked it up another four layers of that if you could do the math there so I get over my 300 amp so I can really pull these like I want to now let's get on these inverters all right for one of my viewers um, he wants to know can the alpha 1500 can you bring its voltage up he says he don't like the voltage being at 110 um, Anything from 105 to 125 is good for most all electro electrical needs, but um, they can run between what that one is right now, 113 and about 109. Pretty common. Now, down here is its control board. There's a control board for it, and this is the inverter control board. And right here, see if I can get in there. Let me do a little zoomy here. Oh, hope that'll blur the hell out of it. All right. Push that back so I can do this better here. That's live, huh? Wasn't that, wasn't that smart of me? All right, so you see right there where it says R30? R30 is a resistor that if I change that, may be able to raise that voltage up. Now, I've done studied the schematics on the board, and that is the one that tells that second chip what information to give the processor, which would be the voltage. All right, so we're gonna look into that. Now, as it is though, they're static, it's fixed. They're unlike this inverter, that right there covered with a little bit of hot glue, that one can change the voltage, but honestly on a sweep power, why the hell would you want to? 
Honestly, at 122 to 124 volts, man, it's just sweet. Must be what the SW stands for, sweet power. Sweet. So, we have two sweet powers here. And we're going to do a little comparison of $300, 280 to $300, and this one here, 300 to $325. And I'll put the links, like I said, yeah, up there. I'll put the links to these because this is the kind of inverter if you're wanting a permanent mount, you want to go for. If you want a semi-permanent mount, need compact space, then that one. But let's look at the difference between the two. All right. This inverter has the 3200 watt 12 volt transformers. You see that? Now they're rated at 110 because that's just a standard China uses. They still don't realize we run at 115, 120, okay? But they made up for it with the adjustment for the board. See, now here you go. Let me show you that. You see that board right there? Same board, quite similar. It's pretty constant, okay, what they use. Now, over here, same board. You can see that here. Ooh, I don't know if I can get an angle on that. Let me pull it up just a hair here. See, same board. Non-adjustable because it has in it, in the space, well, it's upside down. It's down here, that resistor down there. All right. That's preset it, but it preset this one at 124 volts, which I like. I prefer. In fact, if I could run everything I had on 125, I would. Everything. Better starting, easier starting, you name it. Now, the difference between these inverters, I want you to look at the 3200. Now, you're thinking now... Man, he done told me, get me one of them there. Need this. And man, that's a, it's a better inverter. This thing is, is like a brick. It's heavy. Heavy. It's because it's got heavy components. Look at the transformers in size. Here, let me get my finger down in there. See that? Down there past the knuckle. I ain't going to do it in this one. It's on. But you can just take a look here. Let me put my finger over the top. See that? Look at that. See that? Look at that. You see? Man, dirty fingernails. Yeah, so I work for a living. Now, um, what is the difference between the 3,000 watt single deck and the 3,200 double deck? I mean, you might be noticing some of it right now. You may be noticing it real quick, okay? Compact by requirement of, you know, the public. This is what they want. So they compacted. Now, it does have a good cooling tower in one of its stages. That's fine has the same the same transformer throttle transformer here and here the same same winding same everything however there's one one filtering capacitor here starting and filtering capacitor here and two here 200 watt difference yeah okay 3200 3000 now this one does have the 3200 transformers and of course so does the 3200 however they both have five. You see? The difference, the difference is not in the voltage step up. It's in the completion circuit. This one here is modest, capable. It has a one second, 4,550 watt hit. You know, compressors, general uh, startups for air conditioning units, refrigeration, whatever, big inductive loads. Five seconds, it can maintain 3,669 before it faulted. And I had to put a lot of crap on it to test that. I got I got piles of crap all over over here. Okay? Now, constant service load. This is something no one tells you about a power inverter. Your CSL is the most important thing you can have. What is your CSL? It is your constant service load. This one has 2,180. That's a lot. So you can run a constant with the, the, in other words, the fans, everything will maintain itself equally and balanced. No stress at that maximum potential. But that's a 3,000 Martin burger, Mr. Pokey, uh, two chance. I, I know what you're going to say. Okay, so you say you got a Chevrolet. Well, let's don't get mad at nobody. Let's say you got a Nissan. <laughs> let's balance it out. Can't hate on Nissan, Datsun. Um, my Nissan's got a V6. 
267 horsepower. And we're going to make a comparison here. 267 horsepower. Did you buy it for that 267 horsepower? Yes, I did. I sure did, man. Me and my slits malt liquor. We bought that. Okay. Do you drive it every day with full 267 horsepower being used? What, are you crazy, man? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I, I, I don't do that. That'd blow the damn thing up. Oh. But if it's there, you got it, right? Well, yeah, man. Just in case I got to tow grandma out of the mud. Yeah, you see? That's how you size an inverter. You don't go get 30 hundred watt light bulbs and hook it into the damn thing. Now, will it turn them all on? Yeah. But what is its constant service load abilities? Okay. This is how you size an inverter. Normally, when you drive that Nissan Datsun, um, 267 horsepower never comes into the equation. 140, if you want to thug up a little bit at a street light, maybe 180. See them numbers? You get it? Same theory, right? All right, but your intention isn't just to make it to the max 3,000 watt inverter because I got a 3,000 watt load. Oh, all right, so say the bed of that Nissan pickup can handle 1,500 pounds. You know what that feels like to that truck? Oof, that's rough, right? But I only load a 1,000 into it. Okay, well, then your truck will last longer, won't it? But it can handle that much if you had to. Same thing. All right. But I paid $300. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. If you want to run 3,000 watt load, get a 5,000 watt inverter. Now, we're getting back to natural here, aren't we? So, constant service load on the 3200 has been tested and proven to be 2,780 watts. That's 600 continuous watts more for CSL than this one. Over here. Since I had his out, uh, he sent me an email yesterday. This took me three hours to do this damn test. So to take your patience, cartoon watching wannabe stuff and leave if you don't want to learn. All right, you had your chance. One second burst, 1,810 watts. Five seconds. For five seconds, this 1,500 watt, because they're not lying to you. This one, this little company here, I put the link down there below for it too. They're not lying to you. Okay. If your inverter don't handle what it says, you ain't got enough battery and big enough cables. All right. Well, he was telling me, he says, I don't know what's going on, but I hook up a load and it and, it, and the bolts drop. I said, well, go in here and check. Look how, see all that monkey? They're all built like this. Go over here and check. Make sure those are tight right there. Because if it's just loose at all, loose at all, this right here requires 25 inch pounds or you ain't going to get full power. Minimum. 25 to 30 inch pounds. Most people, they'll put them on with a screwdriver because the damn thing has got a screwdriver in it. So we're going to put it on with a screwdriver. Come on, Bobby Joe Jimbo. Put it on with a screwdriver. My trolling motor don't work. Here, boom, it's working. Whoa. Yeah. DC power requires torque. Okay. So if your inverter ain't putting out good full power and you've got the right cables, check these lugs. Make sure you turn it off, unconnect it, flip the power switch a few times to dump your capacitors out so you don't go <laughs> get that big shock, okay? Tighten them up. Same thing. See? These are super tight. I got that propped up on something. All right, so this one here has a constant service load of 1,020. To be honest, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not joking. For a 1,500-watt inverter, you know, Yang Trans Inverter Corporation, if you get 850 out of it on a constant service load, that's decent. So this little Alpha, which is not, not expensive, to have the CSL of 1,020, that, that's pretty damn good. Um, probably why I like running my electric mower with it. 
I'm going to send one of these to Ginger Billy or something. Maybe he'll love it. All right. Over here, let's do some more shopping and comparisons here. I don't know if I showed it. This has re retention charge filter capacitors. This one does two. It has three. This one has one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Hey, that's better. Ten. Ten. Stabil those are load stabilization capacitors. Nine. Over here, one, two, three, four main caps. Remember, that's only 200 more watts. One, two, three. Now you're thinking, John, I, I, I mean, y'all, you, you you talked up that thing right there, and now you tell them, hold on, hold on. This one is already overbuilt. Look. Get it? It's already overbuilt. Not apples and oranges here. We're talking about grapes and wine. It's not the same thing, which one's a little more perfected. All right. Now, this company may quit making this inverter, and I hope the hell they don't. And I'm going to tell them right now, Zia, Sweet Power, don't stop making this inverter. I understand it's expensive to make this one. And here's going to be one of the things you're going to be like, woohoo, I'm sure that one's the same way. No, it's not. This one ain't the same way. Look. Do you see that full deck aluminum chassis? Look at that. Look at that. Three sixteenths full deck aluminum chassis. <sighs> all these, all these in here, all these are Fairchild. They're IMRs and Fairchild. You, you, look, this is just a decent Chinese brand. You understand? They're they're good. At least at least they're not low XE. Pow. That's what's in the three quarters of the inverters. Is that Luixi? L-U-X-I? Luixi? Whatever. At least these are good. At least these are the Korean style or Korean made ones. But back over here. This inverter here has got has got the balls of a Russian bear. Okay. This inverter would even would even power up the uh, sex toys of a Romanian prostitute. That's some hitting power. Hi, huh, Margarita. Now, over here, this inverter would probably do the same thing, but she'd have to spend less time with it. This one will run a jackhammer, a 3200 watt jackhammer for short burst. This one will run run it for about 45 seconds at a time. Now you're like, well, uh, well it'll only run it for 30, uh, 3,200. Are you listening? It'll do it. Most of them won't even start one. I have 4,800 watt that won't start one. Got it? So we had an Ames. We had a biggest Ames. 6,000 watt would not start that jackhammer. That one will. Now you're getting it. Table saw. See? Look. See that? No problem. Look at the freaking gauge of wire. Okay? They got 10s here and 12s here. Most of these have 12s and 14s. And those are crimped and epoxy. See, I did this one by adding an extra plug, so that's a little monkey, but because it had a hard wire point. This one here, good inverter, but 14 gauge wires. Well, they don't need anything more than that. Probably could have survived with 16, but at least they put 14 on it. Now, this over here is a voltage conditioner, okay? Yeah, you're wondering, ain't you? We're going to be doing a video on this where we're going to take a modified sine wave. Now, I'm going to be using a 
a uh, digitally modified sine wave. You know, so it is the the eight steps on zero. So in other in other words, square wave instead of it being up, over, and down, it's going to have the steps that come across. Okay, so it's a smaller wide peak at the top, sixty hertz. So it should be able to almost mimic. This is a twenty uh, twenty amp should almost be able to mimic a sine, true sine wave. What it'll do is by having these two Torel transformers and then these two, two uh, uh, MagTap transformers and these capacitors, is it should be allowing the square wave to slightly round its pit points. In other words, not this part, but let me get a pen. Might as well explain it, right? So, right now, that digitally enhanced does these little notches here, like so. Comes down past zero and draws zero going right across here. And it copies this over here. Oops, that was dumb. Copies this over here, like that. All right, so it's kind of mimicking the true sine wave, trying to, digitally enhanced, okay? So it doesn't have this board right here that does that. Well, it doesn't have this board, and then it doesn't have those transistors and those transistors, and, you know, there's a lot to it, difference and modified. And, of course, it doesn't have that over there, all right, which is the sensing. Okay. So what we're going to have is we're going to have by using this little board here. We're going to be testing to make sure, and I've done this once, and it seemed to look like it was nice. It's going to go up. It's still going to have that notch but it's going to have it shaved a little bit. So it's going to look more like this. You see? Oops. So instead of it being a rough squared notch, it'll be a little bit, probably 20% smoother. Now the modified, uh, not square wave. Remember, there's a difference. There's square wave. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. That's square wave. All right. And that's the modified. But we're going to go modified plus by in, including this in one of the circuits and comparing the two. So, so you know, look, what does it say? Big bold letters. All right. Now, you get to see that. We're going to test more and more small functional boards that you can add to things. I want to give you guys a little a little update on these inverters because one, it's like this inverter. We're going to learn right here. See, look, here's its efficiency. It's idle. It's idle is only three point five watts. So that's less. Was that a quarter? About a one quarter of an amp. Leave the damn thing on all the time. See, it's on. This one over here, people are going like, man, that thing just jumping all over the place. Well, you got to do what's called an averaging. One guy says, I got 17 watts of idle. That's 1.3 amps. That's ridiculous. Another guy says, I got five. I'm like, did you use an RMS meter? But they both say, no. <laughs> Well, what you got is what's in between that point. That is when that 17 watts is when that capacitor dumps to that one. And then that's when, where's it at here? So I can find it on here. That's when that right there calls for refill on those. That's why you use the little test light. Where the hell is that? To pre-charge your inverters so that you don't have that lump sum shock. When you see that jumping from boom, 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 back and forth, it's because that's the cycle ratio of that. Same one right here. See? That's the cycle ratio of that. That's that's when it's constantly keeping the capacitors. Do you want to constantly push a charge against that? Hello, McFly. No. You'll age the hell out of them. That's why it's built so well. Their design don't do that. But it does this. It makes me crazy. I want to go home and drink Bud Light and put on a dress. 
Now, don't do that. All right, so um, go means voltage, means wattage, and this one pulls about 9.2 on average. This one over here, it only pulls 9.68. That's it. Idle. Yeah, it hits 19, and it, stay, it goes from 7 to 19. It spends more time than that. So you have, just have to put a meter on it and give it time. In one minute, 9.68 watts, three quarters of an amp. Three quarters. That's it. Okay? Most inverters pull 1.5 amps just sitting. Every one of the inverters that I studied and picked is because their idle current. How much they use just to spend time being ready, being ready to be used is low. So if you got a thousand watts of solar panels, do you want your solar panels being ate up or your batteries all night long before you turn on the blender to make that last drink for the night? No. Got to get one with the lowest idle current as well as the best CSL. Okay. This one over here has a 4,970 watt one second capacity capability. Now, how do I determine that? 0.5 volts. True factors is 0.5 volts. 1 volt for 24 volt, 2 volt for 48 volt. So if you drop 2 volts in a 48 volt, and oh, and these here, these here, that link that I gave you there, go down there. Ninety-six volt, forty-eight, sixty volt, forty-eight volt. You get them at anything you want, anything you want. Go up there where it says CSI or Zia, and hit the contact. And say I want that voltage. That's what you'll get. Forty, thirty-six volt. You want to mount one on the golf cart? They make them thirty-six volt. These people have run around twenty freaking years, twenty years. Do you know how many Chinese companies even existed in the last, for, for 20 years? Like 3%? Literally? Most all Chinese companies are under five years old. They don't make it over five years. 20 years. How'd they do that? Good techs, man. Good engineers. So, they, they actually hired engineers from the United States and the UK. That ought to tell you something. So this is a big rundown of what we're looking at. This does a five second, 3,895. Oh, there you go. I write my test on them, so if I ever open them up, I know what it did. Okay? It has real capacity. Who in the hell would put eight gauge wires, okay, coming from their boost to their, to their, to their conversion? Nobody. They did. They did. Why wouldn't they? It's because it's what it can do. Same over here. All right. So, um, giving you all a little rundown on inverters, a little rundown on the main thing was I want to do the video for a friend. But while I was at it, I figured, well, might as well get a little information out to people. And long video, ramble on. Um, but y'all go down there and look below. And you're going to see that the links to these is accurate. And if they're not, let me know. It'll save you money. Um, you'll get a discount, I think. I'm not sure. I'll have to uh, check. But because I have a buyer's account, I can use the links. It's, it's not my, these aren't mine. But I have a buyer's account. So when you have a buyer's account, you can share a link and they can get, people can get 3% off when they click on the link compared to when they don't. All right. So, and that helps. $10, $20, whatever. But here you go. This is a better inverter, and if you're going to mount one permanent, you'll see the full picture. If you're going to mount one permanent, go here, like in a home. If you're going to go in an RV, this one's a little more, this one handles temperamental, and they have the digital model. The link I'll put on here has all of this, digital, non-digital, $270 all the way to about $340, okay? But this saves you a ton of money in your idle power in your co total cost and these have the very powerful very powerful good quality lugs on them and they don't mess around they do what they're supposed to do 
as far as the uh, the alphas, man, people love them. There's a reason. They're just good, basic, constant, operational, and basically that part. 0.26 amps. <sighs> Y'all got to give them guys credit. Whoever picked this and renamed it to sell it as that, they did good. Because average inverter, 1,500 watt. No, no, no. You're going to be seeing 0 0.79, 0 0.80, 0 0.83 idle amps. In other words, about 10, 12 watts. That right there, that right there makes a big difference. If you're just going to hook one of these to some of those to keep your refrigerators on, big freaking difference. All right, guys, y'all be good. If you got any questions, put them below the video. If y'all ain't noticed, I answer a lot of them. I don't drive a truck like I used to, so I'm around. Be good.